Florida. What is so intoxicating about the Sunshine State? Is it the weather, the surf, the sand, the culture, the landscape? Ponce de Leon famously came searching for the Fountain of Youth, but we're here looking for something far more invigorating, the whiskey. Hello, America. I'm Madison Grigsby. And I'm Chris Grigsby. We're launching a web series called 50 States of Whiskey, in which we go to a craft distillery in every state, with the goal of telling a story about how whiskey has shaped this country historically. Join us as we explore the spirit of America through the spirit of America. Today we're heading to the annual Whiskey Obsession Festival in Sarasota to learn more about the growing craft whiskey movement in Florida. This is the first whiskey festival on Florida's west coast. Whiskey Obsession is one of the largest whiskey shows in Florida, celebrating fine whiskeys from around the world. Gourmet appetizers and a lavish buffet complement the selections. This is going to be an all-you-can-eat buffet. Lavish, you say? Lavish. Lavish buffet. That's my favorite kind of buffet. Yeah. The Whiskey Obsession Festival was filled with a wide variety of whiskeys from all over the world. During Prohibition, Florida was such a popular port for bootleggers and rum runners, the legendary gangster Al Capone kept a second home in Miami. The festival showed that the state's love affair with America's favorite spirit hasn't ended, and some of the best is being made right here in their own backyard. We've had this farm now about 26 years, and we never figured out a way to make a living with it. You know, you go out the gate every day to work to pay to keep the farm. And uh, back in 2007, Marty read an article in the uh, Orlando Sentinel about uh, small Midwestern farmers doing this very thing to uh, supplement their farm income. And uh, she called me at work and read me the article and said, you want to make whiskey? That was pretty much a no-brainer for me because I drink a lot of whiskey, so it's, <laughs> it worked out just right. Palmer's Reserve starts by making a beer out of four ingredients, Florida corn, barley malt, flaked rye, and rye malt. They mix 60 pounds of grain with 30 gallons of water and let it ferment. Then they pour the fermented liquid into a handmade reflex column still. The still boils, evaporates, and condenses the liquid, creating and then cleaning whiskey. They put the whiskey into five gallon charred oak barrels mixed with toasted orange chips straight from their farm. During the eight to nine month maturation period, each barrel undergoes a ritual that Dick and Marty refer to as the laying on of hands. So you think about a tea bag, if you just drop it in water, you know, it just kind of sits there and does nothing at the bottom, you move it around and it, and it uh, takes those flavors much faster. Move the barrel like that. 40 times each day. All of them? Yep. 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 Just... Some of the tedious work you were talking about. <laughs> yeah, some of the tedious work. Marty bottles all of the finished whiskey herself when she isn't busy handling the rest of the business. Is it pretty safe to assume that you run this whole operation? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me and the dog. <laughs> Me and the dog. And the dog's not the only thing helping Dick and Marty create such a unique blend of whiskey. What I wanted to talk about was aspiration. That's what, uh, uh, that's what the process where a barrel in, imparts its flavors uh, to whiskey. And, you know, people think of, uh, of Scotland as being a perfect place to, to barrel whiskey because of the even temperate climate all the time, right? Well, the, the thing that really makes a barrel work is changes. Changes in temperature, changes in humidity, changes in air pressure. Those are the things that make a barrel expand and contract, and that's what, you know, pulls the whiskey into the barrel and pushes it back out and gives us flavor. We get huge changes in all, uh, all those, uh, the, you know, those different weather components on a, on a pretty constant basis. So if you want to mature whiskey fast, Florida is the best place in the world to do it. Okay. 
So obviously we prefer our whiskey neat, uh, but for those of you who like cocktails, we made a cocktail using Palm Ridge Reserve. We're gonna do one and a half ounces of Palm Ridge Reserve. We're gonna do one and a half ounces of St. Germain elderflower liqueur. Then we're gonna do about two dashes of lemon bitters, a quarter of an orange. We're just gonna squeeze the juice in there. Take about six to eight mint leaves. Then we're just gonna shake that. Strain it over ice. We'll garnish that with a mint spray. A little bit of orange peel. Mm -hmm. Come try it. Primo. That's good? That's good. But you like it. No, no, it's yours. That's, that's <laughs> delicious. We decided on rye um, just because it's something that's hard to make. Uh, it's a challenge to make, and there's really not, I mean, there's some great rice out there, but we, we wanted to just kind of put our spin on it and just make it unique, and it, it is. Leaving behind Dick and Marty at Palm Ridge Reserve, we head deep into the Florida wilderness in search of Wild Buck Road. Kevin, a contractor, and Natalie, a nurse, purchased the 80-acre plot with the original intentions of building a horse camp. But when Natalie's Irish father, who came from a long line of Scottish distillers, regaled them with tales from his bootlegging days and revealed how perfect their new land would be for making whiskey, they couldn't help but agree. He thought that this was just begging to have a distillery story. I think it story. reminded him of his uh, bootleg, the days of being hidden down in the woods. I sure. think the idea of being surrounded and nobody around you, no neighbors, kind of triggered that. <laughs> Wild Buck whiskey is made with local 401 black rye, some of which is grown right on the property. The hand ground rye is mixed with filtered rainwater and allowed to ferment 24 to 48 hours. Then they run it through this handmade still imported from Portugal. Steam comes in through the still. It has 60 feet of coil in the inside of it also. And actually it just kind of spits it out the back here. So you know when this is running there's steam flow. It takes a while, but Kevin thinks it's worth the wait. I think one of the keys of our product is how slow it's all made. You know, most guys can do this stuff pretty quick. The whiskey is barreled at 100 proof in 10, 15, and 25 gallon barrels and aged for 10 to 14 months. Eventually, the barrels are vatted together in order to give the whiskey a smooth consistency and distinct finish. It's a time consuming process, but all that hard work paid off when Wild Buck won an award from the American Distillery Institute in San Francisco with some of the first bottles they ever produced. Just put that together, FedExed it overnight to uh, San Francisco, so everything was like. Right, right at the deadline, so we were very excited to. to we kind of thought, you know, maybe we because there was so such wonderful competition there. We thought maybe we might get an award for our packaging. Mm -hmm. So we thought, well, that would be just an honor. But then when they came back and they said, no, you actually won for the rye uh, category. That was just that was just over the top. We were so shocked by that. It was great. Even though they're winning awards and meeting an increasing demand. Wild Buck won't be taking shortcuts to grow anytime soon. I have a problem with uh, giant automated stills that uh, CEOs and hedge funds own, and they're, they're going with the crap thing, and, and they're not. There's a beer guy not long ago, he's opening up down here, and he's, oh man, he said, all I gotta do is push a button, and everything just runs itself and all that. Yes. What's the craft in that? Where's the craft indeed? Natalie and Kevin don't just make whiskey for the money. They do it because they genuinely love their work. Well, you know, I, I don't mind getting up early in the morning, but four in the morning, I actually look forward to it coming over here and firing it up, you know? Okay. And, and so I do. I, I feed him dinner in the distillery. I bring him a grilled cheese, that's dinner, because he's like, I'm watching this, I have to switch today. So we're gonna use Wild Buck 100% rye whiskey to make the high rye cocktail. So it's gonna be an ounce and a half, of dry whiskey, three quarters of an ounce of Grand Marnier, three quarters of an ounce of maraschino liqueur. And lastly, we'll do two dashes of orange bitters. Shake that. And we'll strain it over ice. And we'll garnish it with a maraschino cherry. There you are, the high ride cocktail. We came to Florida hoping to discover a whiskey as rich as the history of this great state. 
and we weren't disappointed. The quality of the whiskey and the kindness of the people who crafted it lifted our spirits for the long journey ahead.